Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Push the Point, where I have got the usual, my boy, Yorgos Samaras, Mr. Ninth at Warsaw himself. <laughs> no. Tears were shed. Remind us of them. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, dude? How are you? Pretty great, pretty great. I'm still... Uh, Still super hyped about the new season. I mean, Warsaw was so close mm. and we had no time to spare. Instantly when we get back home, we have Mysteria yeah. all over, you know, a few days later, premier event in Tokyo, every card is up and back into the, you know, back into the tinkering and brewing stuff and brewing lists and it's been a blast. Yeah, I imagine this has been like the prime time for your, t- because you stream quite a lot on Fab Chaos on Twitch, that this is like the, the it, it's always different points of the season, isn't there? And it's just before release or when everything's spoiled, it's brew time. You know, it must be really fun for you. And, and Mysteria so far has been really interesting. I mean, all of the three heroes, I mainly tinkered with New and Zen, but New and Zen have so many ways that can be built, and that's so interesting. I mean, I I, I don't think that was the case with Heavy Hitters so much, for yeah, instance. Yeah, yeah. So, it's it's I'm mostly super excited about this deck deck, yeah. Oh, it's it's the talent system, honestly. The every time the talents come out, it, it it gets really deep. But let's get into it. We've got new alluring desire. Um, so her ability is your attacks with stealth gain. When this chain link resolves, banish all action cards defending this. So this is something that is quite scary to block with because she has an instant free chi so you need to transcend when you pitch your chi makes makes this ability kick off look at the top card of your opposing hero's deck if it's blue you may banish it full stop right that that's that that's just that bit then until the end of your turn you may play blue cards from that hero's banish zone without paying their costs so when you're blocking they'll get banished <laughs> <laughs> if you just pitch this, you have a look at their top card of their deck. If it's blue, it goes in the bin. You've it's the whole thing is just incredibly awkward, and it's building up, right? But just give me your thoughts, No. What's what's her hair ability like? So the first really important part to note is that it's not new that does the banishing. It's the actual stealth cards. It's like your stealth cards get this text. Yeah. That's super relevant because any card with stealth that has an ability that triggers whenever you banish a card with this stealth card, it is considered to have been banished by the stealth card. So you might gain some life, you might draw some cards, you know, all these spicy effect of the stealth cards actually trigger because of news ability. And that's a huge part in uh, of your game plan. I never really thought of it like that. Like, I just thought of it as the, oh, okay, well, we're just going to put cards away. But I never thought that actually it's the extra text and everything else about what the, the cards are saying, which we'll go into, as you'll see, that, you're triggering. If you block, I'll trigger this. If you don't do it, I'll hit, and I may also trigger this. It's genu- and, and, genuinely alarming. Yeah, it's it's super interesting, and it's super interesting to look in the future because we have we have a decent amount of cards that actually trigger here, and it's super relevant the text. But it's even more interesting to look forward in the future. Whenever a new stealth card gets printed, we instantly will go oh. What happens if we, I put that in new? Can I trigger the effect a bit easier? Yeah, yeah. So that would be something important to keep in mind whenever we get any new stealth cards printed in the future sets. Ooh, okay, well there you go. That's the that's, it's, it, the ability is that strong. The fu- the future is ooh. well. Anyway, let's get in. Let's get into the and, and, um, let's get into the equipment. Let's go to the main board. We'll we'll start off with the one, weapons. One, one, oh, go on, so, go on. One side note about the hero ability as well. The fact that you can access the opponent's card without paying anything actually in lot versus a lot of decks gives you the opportunity that all you need to do is assemble a combo of your opponent's card and right. you just win the game. I mean, <laughs> it's plain silly. I mean, all you need to do is try and get in the banish zone that blues that combo with each other that are already in the opponent's deck. And at some point, you just activate your hero ability and you just go, okay, 
this is the combo you were trying to pull off into me. I'm going to do that now. Oh, now man. This is mine. <laughs> I have. You no longer get to play with your cards. <laughs> now these tricks are mine. <laughs> I, I have seen a Vincent. Get like just a snapshot Vincent, and it obviously was just like the perfect scenario of i saw two blue Mer- meridian skies and two of the blue the onslaught one the, I, I can't remember which name of it is but it's the four cost blue her, her best one she had two of them and she pitched her chi and i was just like oh my days this is gotta be a nightmare skies into that skies into that oh I mean, I, I played I played another game into a victor, and I had a few gold uh, because he lost some classes. And at some point, I played three gold main estates and created <laughs> and created twelve might tokens. And I'm like, thank you for these might tokens, Mister Victor. <laughs> I mean, the, the game state that this ability creates are just wild. I mean, it's so interesting to you, and, and that's a big problem from the opponent side as well. Whenever you are facing new, every single blue card you put into your the deck you present, you should keep in mind that at some point they might be your opponent's cards. So you should re- be really mindful about which cards you side in when you're playing versus a new player because Absolutely. she will banish them. <laughs> yeah. It's a note. It's a it's a note as well that the one thing Ranger has is those blue arrows that get put into the banish zone. She can't play them because they need to be played out of the arsenal, which is not where you're playing them from. So out of all the things, I'm like, well, at least you can't play these arrows. <laughs> and, and arrows the, and arrows also need to for you to have equipped a bow. You can throw yeah. arrows if you haven't equipped a bow. So there is there is something. But it doesn't matter. You're just banishing a card away <laughs> anyway. Let's, let's get stuck in. Let's start off with the equipment. I, I will just say that we'll, we'll just go with the classic spider spike. It's a really old, you know, it's a classic weapon that does, you know, it's, it's the most normal assassin weapon there is. But why did you pick it in? I mean, most, it's uh, it's exactly what you said. Spider's Bite is one of the most powerful assassin weapons because almost all the decks run a lot of uh, attack actions and most of the decks as well want to use the excess uh, attack action cards to block. Mm. Everyone is running Command and Conquest. A lot of decks are running in Lightning Strikes. You know, there are so many decks that are built around having attack actions. So Spider's Bite is the treat we get from being in the Assassin class. So having access to these powerful plays where you open with Spider's Bite and then play a Command and Conquer, and then they suddenly need to use three cards to defend it rather than simply two, and they can't play reactions. So it creates this really awkward situation. So... I don't ever think we're going to see an assassin without running at least one copy of Spider's Bite because mm. just of how powerful the weapon is. Yeah, that's fair enough. And then she's got a new piece of equipment, Beckoning Misplayed, which is it's lost the piercing text, but that's fine because the on hit is whack. Okay, cost two, has go again, comes in for one. When it's hit, your next blue attack this turn gets plus one and go again. Okay, you you run this card. Right, you just run this card. I mean, pro- probably, 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 this is one of the most uh, important uh, pieces of equipment for the deck. I mean, it's uh, it's literally the glue that holds together this uh, this deck because not only you will see in the future that we have a lot of stealth cards that are blue, and mm. these are actually our threats, and that's probably something with Mystic in general that we. We are actually looking to play our blue cards rather than just use them for research or pitch them, which is which has been the normal way to use a blue card so far until the Mystic Talent has until we have seen the Mystic Talent. So that dagger giving getting go again, so having inbuilt ways to extend your turn. So all you need to do is attack with a blue with a dagger and then your whatever stealth blue card gets go again, that means it's so easy for you to actually use a bigger hand, which in the past that used to be a big problem for Uzuri, for instance. Mm. The, the biggest problem Uzuri had to face was what, okay, I disrupted them and I get a five card hand. I have an arsenal and four cards in hand. 
what and what now. Lou doesn't have that no. problems. I mean, new new is. I think one of her biggest strengths is just how powerful she is whenever she gets a full hand. Yeah. And that dagger is a big reason for that. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Do you ever get a lot of games? Because it's hard, because of my testing with this. I've been running around with Enigma, which seems to be someone that can manage this dagger particularly well because of Spectral Shield. But, do you, but with any other hero, do you find that they choose to just let this through? Or do they always go, nope? I mean, it uh, it depends. And that also adds a layer of bluffing in your turns because so many times you might just attack with a dagger and you might just want, you know, to play a living witness, but you have an extra blue, so you just want to pitch and dagger. You you were never planning to, to attack with a blue card, but the opponent does know that, mm. you know? I mean... Whenever you attack with Beckoning Mistblade, the opponent needs to think, oh, do they have a blue stealth in the Codex or do they have two attacks and they can't do anything if I block this? So it really gives the opponent, you know, windows to misuse their hand and it really helps. I mean, and that's, that's probably the biggest identity of the hero that... It gives the opponent so many windows to actually misjudge what you have in your hand. Mm. And that really helps. Yeah, it's 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 very assassin, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's a very assassin way of playing. I think every assassin that I've played, it just goes, "Do I or don't I?" And you know, and you're like, "Oh, uh, I block." Wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't block. Okay, thank you for the free. Yeah, start start. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> thank you for the free attack. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's go for the um for the the other main equipment. It's actually brilliant to see this. I know that you got tunic in there, which is the card that you've always put in him. But you've got some like common equipment, which is wild, right? Like normally you just see heroes with just full legendary or majestic equipment, but this seems to have two common ones. Let's start with Undertow Stilettos, Tat Reaction, cost one, create this, creates a sliver in your hand. A sliver is go again. Next attack a next attack action has go again. It's also an attack reaction when you play this. Has Battle Warm One. I could see why you want this in. Battle one's a strong text. I mean, and here, here we get back to the point where we said earlier that there are so many different ways to build new, and this this just shows. I mean, any other piece of boots also makes a lot of sense. Snapdragon scalers, the assassin legendary, but it really depends on what you're trying to do. Mm. And there are two really powerful things about the stilettos. Number one is that the go again compared to the other boots, is pretty much unconditional if you have to pay one. I mean, because the Slither just says, target attack, gets go again. No conditions. It could be a Command and Conquer. It could be a Leave No Witness. It could hit. It could not hit. You don't care. You just pay one, and you give go again on demand. The moment you need that go again, you have access to it. Mm. And that's that's pretty powerful. And the second note is that one of the most powerful cards in the deck, Bonds of Agony, we'll get to this later, uh, require you to actually have activate three attack reactions. And that's a single piece of equipment that's two attack reactions because it's one attack reaction to activate it yeah. and the second attack reaction to actually play the reaction card. So it makes it way, way easier to activate all these cards that require an attack reaction to get their full effect. Yeah, no, that's... that's, that's yeah. Yeah, it makes total sense. It makes total sense. Yeah, the fact that it has attack reaction on it is that is the buff because of the what the cards are asking for, like you were saying. And again, arousing wave. It's the same thing. Attack reaction. Um, cost one. Destroy this. Create a fan strike in your hand. Fan strike is attack reaction. That gives the next attack plus one. Battle one one. Same sort of deal, isn't it? Yeah, and if uh, there is a big note here. If you have been annoyed by Blade versus Akatsu, where they always can threaten with their arms, the plus one on reaction, imagine playing versus an assassin that has Command and Conquer, Leave No Witness, and at any point where they have one floating resource, they could go, oh, you blocked my Command and Conquer for six, 
okay, I'm paying one, I'm activating my arms, I get a reaction, I give plus one to my command and conquer, now my command and conquer goes through. <sighs> so it's it's so annoying to play against from the opponent's perspective yeah. because at any point, if I want, I can get access on an on-demand plus one to get through all these annoying hit effects. Yeah, yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And you're going for the tunic. Spring tunic is a staple of all decks at this point. So is there no assassin in the chess piece that like stands out over this? Or is this is this tunic just that good? I mean, in my initial list, I had the Redback Shroud, mm -hmm. which was the assassin legendary chest equipment. But, you know, the free research gives access to these uh, powerful assassin lines where you go like Spider's Bite into Get Tunic, play Command and Conquer, or, you know, play Codex, use the one floating to play a more threatening card. So it's a pretty powerful e equipment to have access to an assassin because there are so many lines where that extra free research can threaten so much stuff. Again, for instance, a rousing wave. I mean, mm -hmm. I might be, I might have no resources, but if my tunic is up to three, I can still, if I wish to, get my tunic, activate my arms, give plus one, get my effect through, all the judge. If I don't want, I can just keep the tunic and you know move forward. Yeah, it's the it's. I think the point that, that I like the most with this is that <clears throat> red bat shroud it does give you one resource, but it's very very specific that it can only be used on attack reactions. Whereas uh, Spring Tunic, yes, you've got to wait three turns, but that's one resource for anything that you want. So it's far more flexible over three turns. But are you expecting games? This isn't when you. Whenever I see Tunic being put in, this is a deck that's not. It's, this isn't going to be done in very few turns. You know, we're playing a bit of a mid to long game, right? And. You know, that's where new signs, I mean, new wants the game to drag out so she can banish more cards, so she can have a wider selection in cards in the opponent's banish zone to choose from whenever she wishes to activate her hero ability. So playing a long game is actually, I think, one of the things that new wants to happen. Yeah, no, absolutely. And now we've got the Mask of Recurring Nightmares, all right? Once per turn, attack, reaction, three chi. So you need a chi card to trigger this. Target defending hero banishes a card from their hand. Blade break, two. The game. <laughs> I mean, this card. Oh my god. I mean, it's jokes. It, again, it makes it so hard for the opponent to do anything. I think it's probably the most important piece of equipment for Noob. Probably way more important than even Tunic. Okay. I mean, if, if you want to play new, get access to this card fast. Because I mean, get this card fast because it, it translates whenever you have an excess blue card that can transcend into your hand, you can just translate that into, oh, I don't want you to play with your full hand. Just remove a card from your hand, whichever you want. Remove a card. But you are not going to play with a four-card hand. Even even if you block, even if you use equipment, even if I have no other reactions, if I have a T card in my hand, I can at will on demand remove a card from your hand. Yeah, and it's it's a, and it's an attack reaction again. It's 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 triggering these th these requirements these cards in the deck want to see. So I, I mean even as well, um, does that work with contracts as well? So for example, if you played Leave No Witness, which is down here, and it has a contract. You are contract to banish an opponent's red cards whenever you complete this contract. Create a silver token. If you're playing this and then you attack react and then they go, oh okay, well if I do a blue, then that's a blue that they can play. But if it's a red, then Leave No Witness is gonna get. It. I'm gonna give you a silver. Oh my days! All right, okay, it does work like that. <laughs> Silver, silver is not that important in that specific list because we are not running any of the rebuy equipment. Yeah. But uh, still, with uh, levels of enlightenment, a card we'll get to later, still give you a pretty good way to use silver, which a lot of times is super relevant. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Right, let's get into the deck. Okay, um, I 
where do we where do we begin? I began this last time uh, with Daniel with just going through the transcend chi cards, right? Because this with Mystic Heroes, they all they they all need these cards. It's like paramount that these get into the deck. So you've you've gone for the uh, Homage Ancestors game one health. Yep, that's the one I expect to see all the time. Passover, which is literally the most bonkers one for new. Banish target card from a hero's graveyard, of course. Tiger attack gets go again. Yeah, absolutely. I can I can see that. Uh, preserve tradition. This seems like a nice, easy one to do. Put target action card from your graveyard to the bottom of your deck. Yeah, rising sun. Draw a card. Put one to the bottom of your deck. Requirements really low. Stir the pot. I don't think I remember Daniel having stir the pot, but if he did, yeah, that this one's easy to do. Shuffle your deck, and. Uh, attack attack gets plus one plus her sacred art under current desires yeah they're your chi cards I th- is there ones that you didn't put in i mean mainly i the minus I one to... i've seen the minus one's not been put in yeah so the thing is i want to use uh, to transcend a lot because the worst case scenario if you can transcend me is that you can just use mask of recurring nightmares that means you at least get a card out of their hand. So that's that's a really low bar, you know what I mean? That if the worst use I have of a card in my the second blue in my hand is to manually remove a card from my opponent's hand, yeah. I want to transcend as much as possible. So and compared to the other Mystic Heroes, I think probably New wants to transcend the most because uh, again. She has such a great translate of what she can do with the Chi compared to the other heroes. For instance, Enigma, where you don't want too many transcend cards, you know, because at some point just getting a Spectral Shield is not that relevant, but with new... We'll see what Max I has to see... say. <laughs> yeah. I could see I could see this number getting a bit lower or a bit higher compared to the meta game, how the meta game shifts. And obviously, again... That's a good uh, that's a good spot to make this point that assassin is a reactive class yes. regarding deck building. So we might see a decent shift of how these decks might look like compared to what we are supposed to face. But currently, since it's a newer format, I want to transcend as much as possible in order to you know disrupt the opponent as much as possible and you know see how the hero plays out sure let's talk a bit about the sacred art under current desires it's a legendary so you only got one copy of this if you've played a blue card this turn you can choose all three so create a fan strike and a sliver in your hand so that's plus one and go again attack reactions banish up to two cards in an opposing hero's graveyard and transcend is this card like well when i see um like zen's one go off it's like oh okay power turn power turn because all tigers are getting plus one you know it, it's kickoff time with this do you feel like this is a bit awkward or is it just like oh i feel very strong when i'm playing this i mean it's still pretty powerful that that card, that card really plays to the part where we discussed a bit earlier where you actually during the mid stages of the game even if the opponent has protected their blue cards and played them or used them to block daggers so they are in the graveyard without being banished, mm. that card is the perfect card to actually look at the opponent's graveyard and see which car- two cards you would wish to play and just banish them. Mm. So if the opponent is in plays a deck that has some specific cards you want to target and banish, this card is insane. I mean, versus Guardians, versus, you know, all these heroes that have these powerful blue cards, manually removing the two blue cards you wish to play and then transcending to activate new and even play them on that specific turn. That's super powerful. It even yeah. gives you go again to play more than one. Because oh. again, Slither, Slither doesn't care if the card is assassin oh. or, or has a cost, whatever. You just play this card with full effect, banish the two blue cards you wish to play out of the opponent's graveyard and just play them and give them go again and, you know, pretty powerful card. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. The fact that it creates... Okay, okay. 
Yeah, cars crazy. All of them are crazy. Okay, let's get stuck in to the let's let's go through the stealth cards. Let's go through the stealth cards. So you have got the art of desire body stealth when this hits a hero, banish the top card of their deck. Whenever this banishes a red, draw a card and gain one health. Two copies of this, right? This card seems really good, especially with remember news ability always slaps the. When you're blocking with an action card, you're banishing. Just remember that every single time. So, don't block with a red. <laughs> don't block with a blue. Uh, don't uh, block. Don't, don't, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's exactly that. I mean, Art of Desire Body is one of these really powerful cards to do just... You might just block with three cards and just play an Art of Desire Body and the opponent is in that really weird situation where, okay, I had an extra red and I want to block with, to not take the damage, but if I block, it will get banished, and my opponent will get a card for Arsenal, and they will gain a life. But if I allow the attack to go through, it's most likely going to hit a red, because, you know, 60% yeah. of my deck is red, so they're still going to draw a card, and still going to gain life. So what, what do I do? So, and Art of Desire really shines in this type of situation, and the life gain, even though at first feels a bit... Oh, it's just one point of life. There are many spots where it can push you out of range of the lethal attack of the opponent. So, for example, versus a Kayo, it puts you out of the range of reckless swing. Of their defense reaction. Yeah, reckless swing. Or versus a Ninja, you might get out of Kodachi lock because you might banish a card and gain a life. And that means you, next turn you need to block one less Kodachi and etc. So, yeah, it's it's. If this works, it's effectively a zero for four points of value. Because, I mean, even more, because drawing a... Uh, the, for, so the, yeah. the, the biggest note, I mean, something that's a bit of a decision regarding this deck compared to other new builds is the fact that we are running red oh. stealth cards. Because I've seen a lot of new builds and there is definitely a way to build new without any red stealth cards and just, you know, all your attacks being blue. The reason I haven't went with this strategy has to be Razor's Edge. Yeah. Because Razor's Edge is a, the attack reaction that gives plus three to an attack action with stealth. Yeah. So yeah. that's really easy to either punish or push through the damage. So a lot of times you can just do a two card play, which most of the time in new doesn't have many two card plays that are really powerful. So just attack with a red stealth. The opponent blocks and then just you react and you get the effect through. You might banish a card, you might draw a card, you might gain your life, you might push your hit effect and keep the damage going. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Right, Infiltrate. Wow. <laughs> Didn't think I'd ever see this card. I genuinely, did. this card when it came out was head scratchy. Like, okay, it's, it's fine. It really didn't seem to work with Azuri's plan because yeah. it was like well I want this to hit but then I swap it out and you just block it and I don't know and it's just three points of value I mean what, what yeah. who cares I mean they just block with a card that's the thing I mean it plays so well to the big number of attack reactions that the new has Yeah, and the effect is actually pretty relevant because you know a lot of decks bring defense reactions. I mean, playing a reaction to steal a card from the opponent's deck, most of the time is going to be pretty relevant. Mm. And if it's not, still, you know, the numbers are still great. You still banish a card from the top of their deck. You might you banish the defending card. So it's it's a good uh, it's a good card to actually play your reaction because if you actually get a card from infiltrate. The value is just immense. But it doesn't... But news ability attached to this doesn't trigger its effect, right? No. No, no, no. It, does, it doesn't trigger its effect, no. But it's just another annoying red card that you enjoy protecting it with the attack reactions to make it go through and makes it... Just gives the opponent a headache. That, that's the biggest win here. Mm. Give the opponent a headache if they want to block this or not. Yeah, sure, sure. So they're your two um, stealth red attacks. And then, of course, you've got Leave No Witness, which is effectively a staple in all assassins. Zero cost contract. If you banish a red card, you get a silver token. But when this hits a hero, banish the top card of the deck and one up to one card, no arsenal. Zero costs for CNC, basically. 
Yeah, and, and Codex in, in to leave a witness is always going to be a staple play in any assassin build. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, okay, so you've got there. There your red stealth cards. Let's let's carry on. Let's just keep let's keep on the stealth card train, and then we'll talk through the um, attack reactions after this. All right. So mm-hmm. I desire. Uh, the blue version, basically. Same card, but blue. So it's, it's the same sort of deal. This card's still very strong. If you're banishing blues, draws cards, right? Yeah, and again, it's a good uh, one-card play. It's good it, if it gets go again from the dagger. It's even better. It allows you to transcend. So, I mean, another good two-card play is just play this. The opponent might be forced to block, so you don't get the value if you hit a blue, and then you just transcend. You remove a card from their hand and, you know, you suddenly remove two cards from their hand because they wanted to block this with a red and you also activated the mask. So suddenly your random two card play actually forced them to interact <laughs> with two cards. <laughs> yeah. That's it's genuinely, it's genuinely with the mask as well. And, the, and her, it's just everything. It's like, yeah, you know, it's probably going to fire if I just... And- do all this stuff and I'll grab a blue from somewhere, I will gain one health and I will draw a card and then I'll just pitch to gain a sliver, give it go again. Uh... And the important part is with the transcend cards as well that you are 95% of the time you are looking to transcend during your turn. You don't really care to transcend on the opponent's turn. You don't really accomplish anything by that. So having a blue attack that you are fine to attack with is uh, th- and that's the reason I think that's probably one of the more powerful cards. It's in the middle of the pack, not the most powerful, but compared yeah. to some other. It's pretty, I, it's I had to quickly look at the mass just to go. Is this instant? No, no, no. Because if it was no, instant, no, 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 no. that'd be broken. Yeah. That would genuinely be broken. <laughs> It'd be broken. It, it Someone blood be rush better. bellows, and you go. Um, I'll banish that card. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, not good. All right, bonds of agony. Okay, this card. This card is wiggly wild. All right, zero cost blue, comes in for one, blocks three. Uh, stealth. If you've played or activated three or more attack reactions, this chain link, this gets plus three. And when this hits a hero, look at their hand and then choose a card. Search their hand, deck, and graveyard and banish up to three cards with the same name as the chosen card they shuffle okay so this is why you've whipped up your equipment that says my headpiece is attack reaction my chest and my legs oh not my chest my hands and legs are attack reactions they also generate attack reactions so i will get three attack reactions firing on this um and then basically find that one card and unless you've got more than three copies of it you just go they're gone from the game yeah, and that that <laughs> guard does everything. I mean, that's probably by far the strongest, you know, new card you can you can play. And the biggest problem with this is that it's almost impossible for the opponent to block. I mean, it's impossible for the opponent to block efficiently this card, and that's a big part into it. Because uh, how come? I mean, they have to. You can get potentially plus one from the arms. Yeah. You can get potentially plus three from a reaction. You can potentially not get so much stuff and, you know, just do a small number and give it go again, but still activate the effect. So it's really, really hard for the opponent unless they run a deck with and they have a turn with three defense reactions or something insane to actually correct blo- correctly block this card. Mm. Because, mm. I mean... Everyone everyone who has played new, or if you haven't, it's so fun to see that you just attack with the Bones of Agony for one, and the opponent goes block nine, and you're like, I, I can still go through. Your nine <laughs> means your nine means nothing. I mean, nine, nine is rookie's number. What do you mean? Just block nine, you're left with a single card in hand, and you block nine? Sure, I mean... Is there turns I, where you <laughs> would play this? And then they'll block nine, and you go, okay, sliver, I'm done. <laughs> you just gave me nine, uh, you just block nine for one. Yeah. Banish all these cards. Banish this card. Oh, by the way, I had com- go again into command and go, where near now? You go. 
Oh my days. Okay, yeah. I, I'm starting to notice a trend that any card with the word bonds written on it is <laughs> B for broken. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, pretty much that's it. And the biggest part about uh, this card is the fact that you actually look at their opponent hand and choose which card to banish. We didn't have many these type of effects, but the fact that you can actually just look at their hand and you know, figure out how they want to play their next turn and just remove the key card that most of the time messes up completely their turn and not only remove this card, but remove this card completely from their deck. Mm. I mean, a lot of times, you know, you play versus a Kai, you, you attack with this card, they go, okay, block with a helmet to potentially try and prevent you from activating this. No, there is no way that happens, but let's say <laughs> they might try to. And you still activate and you get a blood rush. Oh. No more blood rush is game. You're out. Your blood rushes are done. You're just a deck. You're, you're playing Kaya without blood rush. You're playing, you know, Victor without uh, the gold main son. You play, if this card hits a relevant card, it's over. You're, you're, you will no longer play this card this game. <laughs> it's terrifying bro it's terrifying okay let's move on to the bonds of attraction now i said bonds are bro bo bonds equals broken okay let's see if this still holds true zero cost one stealth attack blocks for three still uh when this hits a hero banish the top card of their deck then banish a card from their graveyard okay and whenever this banishes a card it has if this has banished another card with the same color, game one. Now, there's a rules thing, right? Where if this is... Uh, and someone's going to... I was reading this on Discord. I, I think there's something where this will gain two health, effectively. Because if this will banish a card from the deck and banish another card from the graveyard, they're both the same color. Both effects are considered that's happening at the same time. So it'll gain two health rather than just the one. Is that right? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's right. I know for 100% it works if the opponent blocks with two red cards, for instance. I know 100% that you get this. I'm not sure about the rest part, but still, even if you get the one life, this stealth card is a pretty good, you know, glue that holds this thing together that uh, you get to picky, remove cards from the banish, from the graveyard to either get in one life, if you've banished... A yellow, you banish another yellow, or if you want to banish the card that you actually look to play with a new ability. Okay, so why is this? Is it what's the thing about this card that is kind of the big thing? Is it the banishing a card from the graveyard line of text that is the bit that you really like? And the gain one health. I mean, uh, but they all there's a lot of them that gain one health, right? So it's, it's art. Yeah. Yeah, but the fact that you can pick a card from the opponent's graveyard, that's the reason yeah. why you want this card. Yeah. That, uh, you know, if you just attack for one, it's pretty likely that the opponent, if just allows this to go through, you will at least gain one life and you will probably banish a relevant card to in further turns use with new. Yeah, that's fair. And stick it with the blue stealth cards because if you play blues, you can transcend. Let's get over to the persuasive prognosis. It's very demony looking for a, for a, for assassins, right? So another blue zero cost for one block three. This is a majestic has stealth as always. When this hits a hero, banish the top card of their deck. Then look at their hand and banish a card with the same color as the banished card. Whenever this banishes an action card. Game one health, right? Okay, same sort. Of, it feels a little bit like bonds of Ag, bonds of attraction, but it targets the hand rather than the graveyard. But it is a little bit more restrictive because it specifically asks you have to get the same color as the card you banished from the top of the deck, whereas the other one is doesn't ask for that. It just says just banish the card from the graveyard. That. Kind of weird that this Majestic is slightly a bit more... It's not a problem, but you know what I mean? It's a bit more restrictive on what you can do. The thing, Persuasive Prognosis probably is the second, uh, apart from Bones of Agony, the second most important blue stealth card you want to get through. Because, again, hand-picking the opponent's hand, and, you know, with, a more, with way more restrictions, sure, but 
hand picking a card out of their hand and knowing what's coming, it's actually super important. And most of the time, the opponent, if you just attack for one with persuasive prognosis, there is no way the opponent will not give you an equipment or a card. So this card always forces interaction, whether you do have a reaction to protect it or not. Mm. Mm. And that, that's the biggest part about it. And, you know, most decks are built in a way where the cards, the card that might be on the top of their deck is most likely to also be in their hand. It's not like the opponent has information about this. So if they had two reds and two blues, most likely whatever you hit at the top of their deck will find something. So you need to respect that fact. You can't be like, oh, yeah. This will just get my one of my art of war. This will get my 3 0 art of war, and I'm fine. No, there is no way you can just allow the opponent to get this through. And that's really important part. Yeah, again. that's fair. That's fair. And then uh, you have got your uh, last stealth card, I believe. Yeah, last stealth card. You've got the pick to pieces. Um, stealth, if you've played or activated an attack reaction, this turn this gets plus one and damage that can't be dealt with. It. Damage that this would be dealt by this can't be prevented. So this seems like a a big F you to Enigma. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the biggest reason that probably the more generic card to use in this spot was blue double trouble. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't really care about Enigma, you can just swap this out for a blue double trouble, which is pretty much the same. Double trouble might be slightly better. But the big upside with this card is that even if you... You just attack with uh, pick to pieces, and all you have to, and you have one extra blue. You transcend. You activate the mask. This card instantly goes up to two, so you deal one extra free damage just... simply by activating the mask. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's that's pretty good. It's pretty good. And then, of course, surgical extraction. It's a blue. It's like this, this card's crazy. This card's been crazy since it's, it's one of the strongest assassin cards since its conception and it came in so yeah and, not and, surprised. and on, on the same note i mean surgical extraction i think is a package with pursuit of knowledge as well yeah because yes. you you really do enjoy playing these blue attacks because most of the time beckoning mist blade in the opponent's mind will be okay sure just i'll take the one damage just play your whatever stealth card for two power i really don't care but if you suddenly then play a surgical extraction for five mm. with go again, mm. or you know, a pursuit of knowledge for five with go again, that most of the time feels like a command and conquer with go again. <laughs> that most of the time will force will force the opponent to block with two cards, and you still have go again if you have a codex, if you have a, another attack. I mean, it's really important to have a blue threat that can get you know the happiness of your dad you're going through yeah yeah that's totally fair i was gonna say pursuit knowledge but yeah no i love that i love that th the the thinking behind that so um we'll do our last little blue here levels of enlightenment you tell me right so this is something that daniel told me so levels of enlightenment three copies whenever you, when this attacks choose one for each blue that you've pitched this turn draw a card this gets plus two this gets go again. So if you pitch two, you pick two of them. If you pitch three blues, you get all three. Yada yada yada. But you're always going to get one, right? Um, why why three copies of this in new? Is this card very good? And this card is insane. I cannot even, you know, express how powerful this card is. It's first of all, at worst case scenario, is a card that's one for three go again that can help you transcend. Yeah. That. That that's the a really low bar. Then it uh, gets activated with the dagger as well. So if you hit with the dagger, you get a free go again. So you can go, oh, now I draw a card and I have free go again. So it was just like one cost, draw a card for go again. Insane math behind it, and it it gives you a slight payoff during the later stages of the game with silver. That's the important part about the assassin part, that if you have a bunch of silver that you probably aren't going to use throughout the game, and at some point you're like three blues, levels of enlightenment, and you have three silver, three silver floating around, you can just pop to silver, then play levels of enlightenment and be like, okay, I just cycled two cards, and then I'm coming to you with 
five go again draw cards. This is crazy. Do you think that Levels of Enlightenment is best in new over the other two? Mm, it probably is, yes. And, and by a decent amount. <laughs> and I think I think by a decent amount. The fact is that pitching, it's not that easy for Zen and sometimes Enigma to have two blue cards in the pitch zone. While in uh, new, whenever you have excess blues, it's so easy to put blues in the pitch zone because you attack with a dagger, you have a chi in your hand, you activate mask, you now have two blues in your pitch zone, so you can play a full effect levels of enlightenment. So that's that's, that's a pretty big part, yeah. Interesting, because Daniel said the same thing about Zen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, anyway, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, the best, the best use of the best use of levels of enlightenment yeah. is when you steal the levels of enlightenment as new from the opponent mystic heroes. Yeah. This is the best. This use is, of this is of yeah. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> okay. And then I am going to say we'll brush over this. Codex of Frailty is uh, an assassin staple. You should definitely get this put in because discards a card. Put your whatever card you want into the arsenal, it's probably going to be an arsenal disruptor card like um, uh, Leave No Witnesses. You know, Codex of Frailty and Assassin, done. Yeah. Just... Even, even if you could, you know, Codex of Frailty is so powerful that even if it doesn't really play to how we want to execute our turns, so most of the time we want to have attack reactions when we present an attack, and Codex of Frailty most of the time doesn't want you to... Uh, behave this way it's still so powerful that you know you still run it even yeah. if it's not entirely how you want to play your turn as new yeah no that's fair enough right let's um let's dig through your um attack reactions you got a couple right um you got hiss three copies of red hiss and two copies of blue hiss this is target assassin or mystic attack gets plus three if you've pitched a blue this turn create a sliver in your hand which is um one for three plus go gives target attack go again it's very it's pretty much razor razor reflex but doesn't need the on hit just that, that's the first big part it also blocks for three and the thing is that one of the biggest problems again with Zuri was that it wasn't so easy for her to get on demand go again mm -hmm. that's no longer the case with uh, with new that that's the reason why his is so important that Whenever you can just have, you know, a random three card, four card hand, if you have a hiss, you know you will be able to attack more than once. Because there is no condition. The condition is what? Pitch a blue. In your 30 plus blue deck, you will obviously have a blue. And it also is counts as two reactions again for the Bonds of Agony. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's disgusting. And then the blue ones, you only went for two copies. Just felt like. Yeah, didn't need a third. I mean, all that... Uh, the effect is that powerful that, again, if you get flooded with blues, blue his is a card you would like to see because, again, that could give you a way to be able to even attack twice, even with blue cards, but you will be able to attack twice yeah. with the blue his. That's fair. Uh, Razor's Edge, you went over this. Plenty of stealth cards. This is zero cost, uh, block three, target attack action with stealth. Gets supposed to be pretty straightforward, right? Nothing more to really add to that. Um, one copy of Evan Strike. Don't worry, everyone. I am going to get to Justin. It. It's this card's going to need a bit of talking about. But Evan by one copy of Target Assassin and Mystic Attack gets plus three. And if you pitch the blue this turn, you create a Fan Strike, which is a plus one. So it's a one for four, basically. It's a one for four that activates two reactions and it re makes it really easy for you to activate Bonds of Agony. This card is really, really strong, but it's competing a bit in the same slot with Razor's Edge. And, you know, in my personal experience, I found that if I always get a big hand, I will have something to do. And Venomous Barret requires you to have a bigger hand, while I struggled with new a bit more on the lower hands. That's why it shows more copies of Razor's Edge over Venom's Bite. If the meta game again transitions into something where you want to be more greedy and you want to play with five cards every turn, I could easily see the Razor's Edge getting removed for more copies of Venom's Bite. Easy enough. Easy enough. Right. Uh, just a Nick. Ugh, this card. 
Oh, this card. Okay, zero cost block three attack reaction. Choose one or both. Okay, probably both. So target attack action with one or less base gets plus five. Okay, so this blue yeah, one. Fun. Yeah, casual plus five. Target attack with stealth gets when this hits a hero, banish the top card of their deck. Okay, right. Lay it on me, Yorgos. I mean, this card again does everything. I mean, it's again, it's probably one of the most important uh, cards in the new deck because, first of all, it threatens the damage that you lack because you run so many blue cards mm -hmm. because it's so above rate. So it instantly transforms your two cards. You play a blue stealth and the nick, and it goes up to six power, which is a way more better number if you want to compare it to you know some other lines it's, it gives you the numbers and the sheer damage to actually close the game and the second part about banishing a second card is something that i was never expecting when i started playing new i actually thought that new was probably going to have a problem with more defensive strategies and more fatigue strategies because your numbers are just so low but the extra banish the extra ban is from Majesta Nick. The extra ban is from your random stealth card. The extra ban is from Mask. Just drains your opponent's deck. It simply drains their deck slowly oh, yeah. but surely. So during the later, whenever the game you know hits the 10th turn or something, there is no way the opponent will have a bigger deck than you. Even if your attacks have the smaller numbers. Even if you are forced to block more. Yeah. And that's, you know, it just adds up to the sheer number of cards that get banished. It's um, it's disgusting. It's disgusting, Yorgos. It's disgusting, yeah. <laughs> and, and again, just a nick is the reason why there is no way you can call out correctly how much power Bones of Agony is going to be. That's, yeah, just a nick and Bones like, of Agony is... If they have one just a nick, it goes up to 11, so I block 11, and they just have two just a nick, and it still goes through. <laughs> 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 and then we'll, we'll mention CNC. You put it in. It's CNC in pretty much everything at these days. But um, yeah, uh, Arsenal disruption basically. Is is there a particular reason? Is there? It could I mean, be, is this kind of essential? Number one, right? If people can't get I one, I don't. I mean, any two cost uh, card, even death touch, you know, even death touch or even any mm -hmm. two cost card could be easy, could easily replace uh, Command and Conquer, but. You know, sometimes well, you do the line of Pizza Blue, Spider's Bite, play Codex, bring a Command and Conquer, get Tunic, play Command and Conquer. This line is probably one of the strongest Assassin lines that we already knew from Missouri. So you still want to have access to this, uh, this line. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. And then uh, in terms of the defensive reaction side of things from your main board, I can see you just got three copies of Sink Below, Sink Below, Sink Below, right? I mean, you want you want to run a few reactions because you do enjoy the game getting later, so you want to survive the game a bit more. And in order to survive, you want to include a few reactions to actually maintain your health. So whenever you have these big, explosive, ultra-annoying turns, you have the life total to just accept the damage and just present a super disruptive turn. That's fair. Right, let's get, let's, let's get on with the sideboard. Inventory, you picked up You've got two fate for scenes. So how many cards you got in the main board? You have got 60. Okay, so there is a bit of a jumble around in terms of some cards mm -hmm. here. So fate for scene, you only got them for two copies. When are these coming in? I mean, whenever you're playing versus strategy where you want to block like a Zalea, like, you know, maybe Kaya, where you your life total is important and you want to maintain it, you, sh you need to put this card. And there are also a lot of matchups where potentially art of desire body is not that great mm. sometimes so you don't really care they might not run so many red cards you know or three points of power might not be enough so it might get inside out when you want to be more in the defensive side versus the more aggressive strategies okay Doug. um looking for scrap seems like a really perfect card in this deck because you've got plenty of ones so um it's yeah when is this coming in and only two copies of yeah what's what's this doing 
I mean, these these cards I could totally see again. Assassin is a reactive class. You need to know how the meta game is going to look like before you can include more cards like this. So looking for scrap is insane in this deck. And whenever you want to be the aggressor, most of the time against illusionists, maybe against mechanologists, you know, you want to have these bigger turns. And it's so easy with all these blue stealth cards to actually activate looking for scrap. It's even easier than Uzuri because your cards, when you play the blue stealth card, it will not go to the bottom of the deck with the Uzuri activation. You are just playing it. So it will go to the graveyard, so you will have um, easier targets for looking for scrap. Yeah, bro, bro. Uh, two copies of Pick to Pieces, uh, Red, Enigma? Pretty much, yeah. And sometimes Prism, because with Prism again, whenever a deck can uh, block you without putting cards in the chain link, so you're not triggering Zuri, that's a bit annoying. Mm. So having access to ways to kill the angels or, you know, kill the annoying auras with... Uh, Get the you know, annoying ward auras, that's pretty important. Yeah, no, that's fair. And the fact that you've put an attack reaction on this chain link as well, just one razor's edge just makes this as a zero for seven. So, yeah, pretty, that's the thing. Yeah, that's pretty scary. And then you got the one, oh no, you got, so you got the weakest link, goodbye, which is also <laughs> what <laughs> Daniel Cruz put this in his deck. So um, two for six, block three. When this hits a hero, look at their hand and choose a card without without base. Is This just seems like Enigma, right? Yeah, I mean, it's good into all the mystic heroes and it's good into Kaio as well. That's the biggest reason I put this card in because... Yeah, uh, you, that's what Daniel the, said. You, <laughs> yeah, you, struggle, you struggle a bit into Kaio because sometimes Kaio just presents these insane numbers. So you want to force them into the defensive and maybe take it a bit slower to play more into how you want the game to go. So that's the main reason why we want to have access to the weakest link. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. And then the one copy of Gorgon's Gaze. Okay, so let's talk this through. Create a sliver in your hand. Sweet. Banish all defending action cards on the combat chain. If a Chi was pitched to play this, you may play the banished cards this combat chain without paying their resource costs. Okay, so I remember everyone looked at this. I remember everyone freaked out, but I have not. That was it. That when I, it was, it was wild for a day. But then I've never seen or heard of this card since. You've got one copy in your sideboard. Come on, sell it to me. I mean, the main reason, the, the thing with this card is again for for a billionth time that. As the assassin class, you want to know what you're expecting to play into a meta game. So you can't blindly put Gorgon's Gaze in because if it's a meta game where the opponent's deck are not looking to block and do not run a lot of attack action cards, Gorgon Gaze is a bit too expensive for, for what we are for what it accomplishes. But but Whenever the text of this card is relevant, even without the chi part, the chi part is just the cherry on the top, okay? Yeah. Banishing every single card, every single attack action card that's defending the current chain link and completely removing their defense and also giving you access to unconditional go again, sometimes this card works wonders. I mean, it's... And it, it might sound silly, but it's actually also pretty powerful into Prism. Okay. Because most, if, if they do not have, you know, the ward type of stuff and they just have a bunch of heralds and they block with the heralds, you suddenly clear, completely clear their block. And again, a big part about this card is that it doesn't require it for the attacking card to be an assassin card. It doesn't require for anything. You could be attacking for a Command and Conqueror and have a card in hand. And the opponent goes, okay, I block the Command and Conqueror for six. And you're like, okay, get my Tunic, play Gorgon's Gaze. Now you block for zero. Now you take six and you discard your Arsenal. And I put a Slither into Arsenal myself. Oh. So it's, it's, it's actually, re yeah, it's actually interesting because it just, so all the cards that they've used to defend are gone. So the attack is now no longer defended. I never it's, thought... It's, yeah. a route, <laughs> it's a route on steroids. It I mean, is a route on steroids. I block with, 
Go. <laughs> but that's the thing. If uh, I could totally see, you know, a few months from now in the national season to a lot of national championship winning lists with new to run three copies of this card. Because... That, that wouldn't surprise me. No, yeah. You know, Just that, because that surprise me. It, it, it's the biggest gotcha. When this card is good, it's really good. <laughs> and the fact that it's and the fact that it's yellow also means that sometimes you can just pitch it to Dagger and be fine with it. Yeah. And that means that it will come later and later. You will have the transcended cards into your hand naturally. You won't need to show the opponent that you actually transcended and have a chi in hand. So you might actually get them with the full effect. Oh, God. All right, yeah. I can't wait to lose to this guy. <laughs> All right. I can't get away. We'll go to the... There, oh, go on. So th- there is one, one more card that I really need to do a huge shout out to this card. Yeah. And uh, I really fought myself for removing this card from the deck. But again, Assassin is a reactive, blah, blah, blah. Siren's Call. Siren's Call. Okay. Okay. I can see it in the maybes. So... Okay. So... Yeah. Go on. So one cost that I'm a mystic assassin attack reaction, look at the defending hero hand and choose a blue card. Add it to the chain link as a defending card. If you do, draw a card. Okay. I mean, first of all, this card compared to Pulse Wave Harpoon, which is the most, you know, common card that has the same effect. This card doesn't care if the card that you put in the defending chain link has a block value. Yeah, it it still true. doesn't care. So, so you can get transcend cards. You can get Iovidia. You can get any <laughs> card. You know, whatever. You can as long as it's blue. It. Yeah, only if it's blue, you just slam it into block, and you just you draw a card. Yes. And again, this card is pretty unconditional. So you can even use this card with the dagger. You attack with the dagger. They block the dagger because they don't want the effect to go through, and you go like. Okay, I'll play Siren's Call. Block with another card now. You are now blocking <laughs> with six power my dagger, and I draw a card. But the problem I had with this card yeah. is that when this card is good, it's insane. When this card is bad, it's horrible. Yeah, because so, you basically. It, it, I remember looking at our spoiler card. I mean, like, oh yeah, I defend my own card. Right, cool. No. Right. Yeah, I've just defended my own card. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, and I know you 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 play it and go, but imagine you if you like imagine if you look at the hand and there is no blue, but then even just looking at their hand, it's just attack reaction. Look at your hand. Is is it worth it though? The one cost. I mean, for the same resources, you could have played the fang and mm. given plus four to your attack. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So this is, is it... so this is the maybe pile. You could put this in, you yeah, it, it, it's if, mess if, around. If the meta game transitions into a meta game where you know all the aggressive decks run twenty plus blues, you know most defensive strategies are Enigma and Guardian and whatever, and they, you know that they will have a bunch of blues in their hand always. This card is bonkers. I mean, this card is really strong if you know it's going to hit. If not. That, that's why we're not including it in the deck currently. I just had a thought that imagine if Icelander was still around. Wouldn't she just be in absolute oh. agony? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just go, oh, I want to ask all this card. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, you played, we played, you played Waning Moon. Let me think. Okay, you block with your card. Let me draw. Okay, I pitch for a chain. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now that's really cool. I can see that you've got some more cards here in the maybe pile. Quite a few cards in the maybe pile. Everything that you just want to have a think about. We won't go through it, but everyone, you can see Yorgos's thoughts in the maybe pile. Their cards just to sort of put into the deck. Try it out have a muck around but let's get through we've uh you got your two no rune gloves and the uh arcane lantern your uh wizard and rune blade game plan um it's pretty straightforward on that front which one would you put in against rune blade 
probably into rune blades i would go just with lantern because yeah. how powerful the arm slot is and versus Kano, you obviously need the lantern probably the blue dagger and the nulon gloves sweet so nerve scalpel uh which is against probably warriors or attack reaction or defense reaction heavy decks effectively it's that choice of if you're gonna see someone with a lot of reactions nerve scalpel's a really good shout for that scale peeler interesting choice what's scale what's scale peeler targeting the main reason we are using scale peeler is exactly what you mentioned earlier that uh, the blue dagger doesn't have piercing so the hatchet warrior type of decks could really easily just all game prevent your dagger with their boots so you don't want them to be doing that so that's why we want the the scale peeler but would you go yeah would you go scale peeler? Nerve... Oh, sorry sorry yeah <laughs> oh yeah no so would you go scale peeler um but do you always pick the blue dagger is it like blue yeah. dagger always and then attack and any the other one is other the one weapon. that's targeting the, the deck, yeah. The one that's targeting the current opponent. Yeah, cool, cool. But I think the blue dagger is essential. Yeah, cool. Um, and Van Brace with Determination. This feels very much like an Enigma targeted card. I mean, almost. This card is super close. Having a recurring attack reaction on demand in the arm slot almost feels like it could be in the deck even without targeting the Illusionists. Because having always access to pay one, activate and attack reactions for all my effects, already seems decent. So it has that extra use in mm. a new compared to the other strategies. If if there were more decks running around that were using a bunch of Oasis Respite and stuff, I might even include this card in the main deck. That's how powerful I think uh, having a non-demand attack reaction with new is. That's not destroying. It's just there. Just going, I can attack react. Anytime. It's cool. It's, yeah. Anytime. Any card that says if X attack reaction have been activated, I can just pay one and get one every single time. Nice. Nice. Cool. Right. Uh, it's, we've been going on a little bit. So we're going to end and wrap this up here. So is there um, any matchups? No. Okay, cool. Right. So play around with this, right, everyone? Play around with this deck. And Yorgos, thank you so much for giving us this first take um, impressions of new Alluring Desire. Anything you want to sort of round up on this deck? I mean, I wouldn't uh, probably get to the conclusion of this deck without uh, the rest of the team members from Fabgeus. So big shout out to them. And thanks for helping me prepare the list for you. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Uh, honestly, go check out Yorgos' stream below as well. And uh, go check out their YouTube channel, Fab Chaos. They are a team from Greece. They've got the world champion, Alex, in their team as well. And Yorgos is an absolute nutcase. He was 9 and owed his Swiss into Warsaw. Very lucky he got into ninth. But, bro, he everyone was like, this guy should have <laughs> snuck into the top eight. But you also got one of your other team members into the top eight as well. So this team, Fab Chaos, in Europe are ones to look out for as well. So, But Yorgos, again, as per usual... Thank you so much for coming on and talking about this awesome deck. And uh, thank you very much, everyone. And I'll see you later. Thank you for having me. See ya. Bye-bye.